Papua New Guinea is a land of extraordinary natural and cultural wonders. Its rugged, forest-covered mountains, tropical coral reefs and pristine rivers are home to a great variety of plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth. With more than 800 distinct languages, it's also one of the world's most culturally diverse countries. People have lived and thrived in New Guinea for millennia, living in close contact with their environment. They've developed innovative and unique solutions to life in the region. But modern changes have presented new and complex problems for the country. Most Papua New Guineans still live on their traditional lands, and providing adequate goods and services and job opportunities to rural and remote areas is a challenge. Rapidly growing populations, poverty, poor health outcomes and high crime rates in urban areas present problems that limit social and economic development. Balancing its need for development while preserving its rich natural and cultural heritage is one of the country's greatest challenges. But new, locally driven initiatives in partnership with international collaborators offer hope. The National Fisheries Authority of Papua New Guinea, through its Aquaculture and Inland Fisheries program, works towards providing remote communities with a means to promote development through better nutrition, food security and alternative livelihoods. These sustainable practices offer promising opportunities for local communities to develop for themselves the nature and type of development they may want, and thereby help preserve culture and local environments and maintain ties to customary lands. With its rich natural and cultural assets, ecotourism in Papua New Guinea has great potential. Sustainable ecotourism can have many positive benefits, offering jobs and playing transformative roles in community development. On the northeast coast of New Britain, local resident Ricard Ryman helped set up by a sports fishing lodge in partnership with the local community. What's brought me here to buy a village is pretty much my love of adventure and fishing. I've lived in West New Britain pretty much all my life. I met these guys 12 years ago now, developed a really strong relationship with them. They've asked me 12 years ago if I could set up something to help benefit the community. So just looking around the bay, I saw there was a lot of rivers and black bass. So I thought, okay, maybe we can tap into this. So we set up by a sports fishing lodge. Unlike a lot of rivers that you see around the world, they're, they're pretty, they're, they're pristine. They're surrounded by jungle, rainforest, and nipa palms. The remote location, yeah, just beautiful areas to fish out of. The black bass and the spot-tailed bass, they're quite unique to this area. Pound for pound, they're supposed to be one of the toughest fish on the planet. Definitely the toughest freshwater fish. A key to the success of the venture is the close working relationship between the local community, the sports fishing operators and the government and research agencies. Attracting anglers from all over the world to its abundant seas and pristine rivers, sports fishing has a great untapped potential in PNG. Not only do we have pristine environments and unique fish here, which is what uh, people all around the world come to catch is a trophy fish. The black bass and the spot tail are the top five trophy fish that you know serious anglers want to catch. Jacob Wani is the executive manager of the Aquaculture and Inland Fisheries Unit at PNG's National Fisheries Authority. He's a leading pioneer in developing the aquaculture and sustainable livelihood industries in Papua New Guinea. And the FA is now seen as the flagship organisation to manage PNG's fisheries. Now we are aquaculture, a coastal fisheries and sports fishing is one of the activities that we are trying to promote. Although international interest in the tourism sector is growing, the sports fishing sector in PNG is young and there are no existing policies or guidelines to ensure the industry expands sustainably and with regard to community needs. In the first initiative of its kind in Papua New Guinea, the NFA is leading an innovative project, bringing local communities together with government, the private sector and international development and research institutions to help develop best practice guidelines for the sports fishing industry from the outset. And I've believed that the sports fishing has huge potential in PNG. Most of the iconic species for sports fishing like black bass, we have no idea about the ecology and biology of the species, so if, if Recreational fishing is going to be an important fishery. We need to get the science right to be able to implement it. 
Look, it's, it's very important for the National Fisheries Authority to have its environmental decision making underpinned by research. So they were very interested in this project because they knew they needed to understand something about the ecology of the black bass and some of the other species before they could develop appropriate policies and guidelines to manage the industry. By engaging local communities from the beginning and working in close collaboration with international partners such as the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research and James Cook University, the NFA aims to draw on local and international expertise to bring meaningful benefits to the people of Papua New Guinea. There are two components of this project. One is the social science, the interviewing community members, and the other one is looking at the, the biology of it. So, um, I think the, the research will help NFA understand the social aspect of things, how you engage people, how you engage communities, because it's the resource that they own. And then how do you get them to effectively participate? So if we are putting any policy guidelines, we need to put that for the operators. And also for the biology side of things, you know, how you handle the fish. How many do you catch? What lures you use? So those things need to be understood. Will the fish survive when you release all that? So I think they can help uh, put management guidelines in place. My role in the project, I feel, is pretty much getting all those different parties together, um, explaining to the people what we're trying to achieve and what we're doing. And I think um, my role is pretty much just to make it work and make it happen and to you know, set up the logistics so it all runs smoothly. One of the really important things that come out of the work with NFA is that there's a strong focus on the end user and, and we, you know, we take the view that the research is a means to an end. We always have that focus on the community so we're not doing research just for the novelty of it. It has to be driven by community impacts. making sure that the local community understand what this project's all about. That's very important because it's all good to get, you know, the science and, and the, the cameras and everyone into the area, but you have to also explain to the people what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to do and how it benefits them. So there's always that open line of communication that has to happen between myself and the people and whoever I bring into the community. The local people have a a strong trust in me, so I have to make sure that I communicate back to them what's going on. Baya Village is home to almost 400 people who live a mostly subsistence lifestyle, relying on the local environment for their food and livelihoods. Like many remote regions in PNG, it faces challenges, including access to goods and services and employment opportunities. The sports fishing venture has brought with it new opportunities that go far beyond just jobs for local villagers. We've started a trust account for the local people, so a percentage of all the income from the guests visiting by a village goes into a community account, which we use to develop um, community projects. And the three main ones being the water supply, medical supplies, and of course education. Jacob Beyer is a community leader and head fishing guide for the Beyer Sports Fishing Initiative. So Jacob, you talk him about all benefits school being in the sports fishing. Yeah, school being play some people all being from that sports fishing through the trust account the community. One plus people all being them get one plus teachers house turn up the site. We have people building out of this trust account. Now, inside the triple classroom, we got plenty of library books. Plenty. This is one area where it benefit too out of this sports fishing through this trust account for the community. This trust account is buy my water tank, and my stable hub, buy plenty of medicine. Now, too, we play help him. Lo transporti mal, all big black cases atau mal, all emergency cases. Time i come up, mi play supply ma fuel, na bring mo rigo la boat, na bring mo rigo la big black usik. One plus solar, mi play sub give ma solar panel, one time ma solar fridge. Yeah, ikat one plus solar fridge, one plus solar radio, stuff inside. 
Oke okay, ya, terus lihat saja Now me stop uh, six play ya, uh, one time uh, congregation, long bay ya. Uh, me bin kama play ya, uh, and only walking finish this last church. So past time long, before me stop play ya, uh, me bin looking for some church, I'm really click. Na time me go to school, me come back, and me surprise all them. Uh, this last building, I'm um, only extend him. So me bin ask him all in the place, long this last church. Us I defend him, extend him long end. Oli bin toki mi olse ma tru long record, long sports fishing, trust account long community oli usim des lamani long extending des latches. Na mi bin lukim na mi emas lo des pla funding we record emi releasing funds lo album des la building. And it's not just a remote and beautiful part of Papua New Guinea. Guests also get to meet the locals and learn how people live here. It's not only just the fishing, it's the cultural side of it, meeting the people, how they live. It really is an eye-opener, just to see what, what, these, what very little these people have, but how happy they are and how content they are with life. And I think visitors that come here really enjoy that connection. At a time of rapid cultural and social change in PNG, it's also allowed people to use traditional ecological knowledge knowledge that's rapidly disappearing in many indigenous communities around the world. The villagers experience and detailed knowledge of their customary land, rivers and sea is critical to the project's success. In the case of sport fishing, um, the locals know how the rivers behave. They've got a very good understanding of uh, fish movement, for example, and that's important if you want to understand something about the ecology of the fish that you're studying. They're the ones also that tell us um, how the sport fishery benefits them in terms of the economics and social impacts. So we see the local community as being participants in the research and, and also their sources of very valuable data. Because it's a way of life for them, and they have that local knowledge that the project requires. And then at the same time, I think the locals need to participate in this and take ownership of it because it is something that will directly benefit them and it's not something that we want to enforce onto the local community or we think that recreational fishing is, is good for you and should be done. We want to involve them so that they see it for themselves and take ownership of it. By involving the local community and using their accumulated knowledge alongside the expertise of researchers, the project has provided important insights into the biology of the target fish species, their habitats and also the social dimensions of introducing ecotourism into such a remote region. The local knowledge, like we all, all us fishermen understand, getting the local knowledge is very important. So, you know, we listen to what they have to say, um, what times of the month the fish are very active or what times of the month are the fish moving out to the ocean, possibly spawning. So, you know, all that social side research we have to document. And then um, we go and do the scientific side. So, yeah, there's a definitely a very close connection between the social and the scientific um, that you have to blend together to, to get the answers. The local community is keen to ensure the sports fishing enterprise is environmentally sustainable. We practice catch and release. So, for the environment, of course, that has a lot of benefits for the fish. We, um, we release most of our fish, we keep a few for dinner um, and also a few for the village. What's happened now is they've realised how important these fish are and how important it is for them to look after the rivers. Increasing impacts in the area threaten the rivers in the region and with them the fish the local communities depend on. Just a few kilometres away, in the upper reaches of the catchments of the most productive rivers, logging and palm oil operations increasingly encroach on the rivers and surrounding rainforests. We are fishing in the, the Langalanga. This river here is just beside the Pandy River, one of the main rivers that we fish. Uh, we get the black bass in here, we don't get the spot tails because the spot tails like the fresh water. Um, and this is more of a brackish, so we get black bass, we get mangrove jacks, tarpon, and cod. This is the sort of areas I'd like to show people because they they need protection and you know each year I see these sort of 
environments under threat, particularly from the logging. Unsustainable logging practices and land clearing for plantations and agriculture impact local environments through habitat loss and silting of the rivers, with significant impacts downstream and on coral reefs off the coast. A lot of logging has come into the area and the problem we have with the river systems is the silting. So removing, removing most of the jungle you have a lot of silting from the big rainfalls that we get during the Christmas period and basically that just muddies up the water. So it's no good for the fishing and, and worst of all it's no good for the fish. The more silt you get the longer periods of time where you have the rivers in darkness and this is going to be a big problem for the bass. It'll wipe out big populations for sure. A main goal of the research project is to understand how these impacts may affect the fish and their environments so that better decisions can be made about managing their development. This project is going to empower the National Fisheries Authority and other agencies in PNG to make better decisions about things like environmental impact statements that are submitted uh, in terms of major developments that could potentially harm the environment. Sustainable ecotourism operations such as the Bias Sports Fishing Project offer alternative models for development that can help preserve natural and cultural values while improving living standards. Uh, this project is exciting for me and for NFA because it's sustainable. People can still improve their livelihoods without having to destroy the environment. A lot of communities have sacrificed their environment you know, through logging, through agriculture, through mining to develop themselves. The success of the project to date also brings benefits and lessons that may be applied in Papua New Guinea and other countries in the region. This two-way exchange of knowledge and the mutual benefits for all partners in the project is a key to its success and a highlight of its progress so far. This project's uh, leading research on sport fishing in the region. Uh, there hasn't been, to the best of our knowledge, any other work that's been undertaken that's been so comprehensive. A uh, very important thing about it, it's going to bring mutual benefits to Australia and, and to PNG and there will be spillover effects to other Pacific nations. I think this project is the flagship uh, research project for recreational fishing in PNG as well as the Pacific. And Australia, as the main donor in the Pacific, can learn from the PNG experience and maybe apply it in Fiji or in the other Pacific Island countries. And also, Australian researchers will you know, benefit from the research here. Papua New Guinea's astounding natural beauty and rich and diverse cultural heritage are treasures of global significance. As the country races to modernise, it faces some stark choices. Sustainable development initiatives run by and for the people that are affected by them offer alternatives that are win-wins for all involved. In an area like Baia, you not only have the river systems, you have beautiful reef systems just on your doorstep. So the snorkeling's great. Kayaking, bushwalking, we've got some beautiful freshwater springs that we can swim in. Um, there's potential for a lot more other sites and tours apart from the fishing. With recreation fishing like this, I think you know, it provides an opportunity for people to keep their environment, keep their way of life, and still improve the socio-economic condition. And for me, I think that's the kind of development we should be looking in PNG. This sort of business is sustainable, and it's great for the environment, great for the people, and it's just a plus for everybody.